The following opinions are solely those of Botest.com and its test captain. When Chaparral set out to create a 24-foot luxury sport boat with jet drives, twin engines, and a head, they did it by creating the 243 Vortex VRX. I'm going to take a look and see how they've done. For Boatest.com, I'm Captain Steve. I like the blue courtesy lights underneath the bolsters and there's no shortage of stainless steel. Check it out. Speaker grills and all the drink holders. The companion seat is quite comfortable with wraparound bolsters, two grab handles, plus the seat back flips to form an aft facing chaise lounge for when water sports becomes part of the action. With the companion seat in this position, we have wraparound seating going around a pedestal table. The captain's seat will swivel around. This will accommodate 12 people in this 24 foot boat. The captain gets a premium upgraded bucket seat. The controls to manipulate it are on the outside. You don't have to go searching underneath and they're stainless steel. And of course we have these sporty aft facing transom seats. These make a great place to relax when at anchor or any time the 243 isn't underway. Now let's take a look at this tower. First off, I've never seen padding in the center here. The texture, a little bit raised so it's easier to grab onto, gives you a better grip, easily collapses. These speakers, part of the upgraded sound system that includes six six and a half inch speakers between the transom, cockpit, and the bow. Incorporated into the tow point is a GoPro mount that has Bluetooth connectivity to the screen and the dash. And we have storage under the seats, but to the port hand side, this seat gets dedicated storage for a 25 quart cooler. The pedestal table has a base both in the cockpit and at the transom, and there's dedicated storage inside the helm console. The port console houses a porta potty. The Bimini top has some cool features. First, there's hardware all through the perimeter, and normally the tension hardware is right over the heads of the occupants. Here, it's moved to the center. Look at this padded area. It keeps the flapping down to a minimum and eliminates chafe. Now at the helm, the panel is completely dark, which eliminates any concern for glare. Vinyl on top, and notice the color matched contrast stitching. A carbon fiber panel has a medallion touchscreen display in the center. We have a single digital engine control controlling the twin engines. Let's take a look at those. The engine hatch is easily opened with the help of two gas assist struts. The details of these engines are easier to see outside the boat, so let's take a look. Here we are with a cutaway model attached to a section of the hull. Let's take a look at some of the features. Let's talk about the reverse gate and the steering nozzle. Here's what we normally see, the reverse gate attached to the steering nozzle. Chaparral's Rotax does it a little bit differently. Let's take a look. Here we have the engine in the forward position. Water comes blasting out the nozzle and we steer the nozzle as normal, but when we shift into the neutral or reverse position, we have the added benefit of lateral thrust control. Moving forward, we have a grate under the hull that prevents large objects from getting sucked into the impeller. Here's what we normally see. Access for the hand to come down and clear things away from the shaft, but Rotax does things a little bit differently. They protect the shaft from the outset with a shroud all the way around the shaft. On the Rotax, the ride plate is actually a heat exchanger. There's a hose attached to it that comes forward, connects to the thermostat and the water pump. That, in effect, gives the Rotax a closed cooling system. Great feature for saltwater boaters. And this engine is catalyzed, supercharged, and intercooled. Notice the vibration reducing engine mounts. Let's not forget the ease of serviceability. Dipstick, oil fill, oil filter, air filter. Now let's get her underway and see how she performs. The 243 VRX has a length overall of 24 feet 3 inches, a beam of 8 feet 6 inches, and a draft of only 13 inches. With 65% fuel and two people on board, we had an estimated test weight of 4,254 pounds. With the throttle fully forward, we topped out at 54.3 miles per hour with a 36.9 gallon per hour fuel burn. Best cruise came in at 5,000 RPM at 25.4 miles per hour. That produced a fuel burn of 8.8 .8 gallons per hour, a range of 156 miles, and an endurance of just over six hours, all while still holding back a 10% reserve of fuel. Acceleration is brisk. She planes in two seconds, hits 20 miles per hour in 3.9 seconds, and continues accelerating through 30 miles per hour in 5.8 seconds. She puts out enough thrust even at idle, making her track nice and straight at minimum speeds. Her lateral thrust control allows her to make turns in her own length a convenient feature even away from the dock. She slices cleanly through waves with spray cap low and wide for a dry ride. She rolls only 10 degrees into the turns and carves well with no tendency to chine walk or even bleed off speed. When taking power off, she'll settle back into the water from a level attitude and she'll coast for a ways before doing so. Now I thought that with the lateral thrust control, the 243 would be maneuverable at the dock. I was wrong. 
She's super maneuverable. Take a look. Here's a feature I really like. The end of the day, the boat's going on the trailer, you're pulling the cover over, easy access to the battery switch. Between the styling, handling, and good looks, it appears that Chaparral has created an attractive competitor in the battle for jet boat customers. And that's my full look at the Chaparral 243 Vortex. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you in the water.